Klassen writes, Just wondering if anyone had any tips or suggestions when using a sewing machine to complement scrapbooking. I have a very old Singer sewing machine getting all tuned up for the job. It's a cabinet model from the 1960s, and I was just looking for pointers on using my machine on my pages. Glittergirl, can you help Klassen stitch to success? Of course I can. Let's have a look at quick basics, but keep in mind that for every sewing machine you're going to need to refer to its manual because they all work slightly differently in terms of where the buttons are and what things do. But the general concepts are the same. You're always going to have the main thread, which is the larger spool and sits at the top of the machine. And you're always going to have a bobbin, which is the small spool that fits underneath. And each of those has to have enough thread to make it through what you want to sew. And if your bobbin's cover isn't clear, you'll want to get in the habit of checking before you start sewing because the most annoying thing when working with a sewing machine is to be going along and then realize that your bobbin has run out of thread. So just get in the habit of checking at the beginning and then you'll save yourself some headaches later on. Now when you switch on your machine, normally it will, if it's an electronic machine for the stitches, it will default to a straight stitch. If it's not electronic and it's manual, then you might have a little lever that um, points to different stitches. So mine will default to a straight stitch and then a 2.6 for the, the length of the stitch. When you're sewing on paper, one of the first things that will make things easier is if you make the stitch length longer because it's it's stitching, it's defaulting to what you need on fabric and that's going to be lots of little holes right next to each other but if I put it on a longer setting so the stitch is longer then it's less likely to tear my paper. Then once I've set that then take something that's not what you're going to work with just a scrap of cardstock that's the same weight as what you're going to use and start giving things a try. So I can sew along and then I can change the length so that I can get an idea of what it looks like. I can also change the stitch. On mine it's by numbers, so if I wanted to change that straight stitch to a zigzag, I type in the number for the zigzag, and then I can just keep sewing and try a few different options. This would be a much wider zigzag. And when I get to the end, this piece of scrap paper serves two purposes. It gives me a guide to see what the stitches look like and that lets me choose what will work best on my layout. So I tend to keep sort of a reference like this and put it next to things on my layout if I want to get an idea. So if you really want to use lots of different stitches on your machine, you can make yourself a reference card and, and mark them all to the side so you know what size the stitches are. And the other thing is that it lets you see what condition things are in before you get started. So for example, if I turn this over, my tension is not perfect here because I've got all these loops here at the back. The, when I got to this stitch, my tension was much better. And here I've got this last loop that's caught. So once I get rid of that, then I can see that my stitches are a bit better. But working on scraps of paper until you get everything so you're happy is the key to not stressing out. If you were to go to your layout and the first set of stitches just absolutely doesn't work right, then it's a bit more um, intimidating and a bit more frustrating. For tension, um, your machine will have tension controls and the tension will be adjustable in both the top and the, bob and the bobbin, but normally you'll just need to adjust this one. And um, it just it's not a case of being more complicated with paper than it is with fabric. It's just that paper is not as forgiving because it's going to cut through the holes. The holes are still going to be there. Whereas in fabric, if I decided I didn't like this, I could rip those stitches out and you would never know. So um, it's just worth getting all of that set and referring to the manual at first so that you are um, proficient with your own machine. Um, sorry not to have a magic answer for every single machine here in the video, but once you've gotten into a habit and this works fine, then you can go ahead and get started. So the first thing I would suggest is that you do a page where you're sewing on individual elements rather than through the full page. So in a way you're faking it. So if I just grab a scrap of 
pattern paper and I'm going to go back to that straight stitch and make it longer and I'm going to stitch a frame around this piece of paper and one thing that kind of helps I think is to put the needle down so that now instead of when it stops it's not going to stop with the needle up it's going to stop with the needle down so when I get to the corner I know I can't go astray so here's what I mean I'm just using the guidelines on the machine itself to stitch relatively straight the slower you go the easier it is to keep things in perfect order and now when I get to the corner the needle stays there and I can just pivot the paper but if you notice I'm not gone nearly enough to the edge to get. So let's try this one. That's a bit better. That's much easier than having the needle up at the corner and trying to move the paper and keep it in line at the same time. I'm going to take you through three projects this week. One, sewing before everything is stuck down. One where you sew as you go and one where the sewing is added as a finishing touch. Just to show three different options for um, what might suit your style a little better. Well, one of the side questions that came up on the boards this week was the question of whether the original Dear Lizzie spring line would coordinate very well with the new Dear Lizzie Neapolitan line. So I went back and grabbed what I had left of the Dear Lizzie Spring and these are the the five designs I had remaining. I um, These were my favorites from that original collection so I had multiples of each of these and all of these appear in my albums quite a lot. Um, but I still have a little bit left of these and then I just grabbed a selection of kind of equivalent patterns. So there's definitely still a green, it's a different green, but it's not the most clashing green known to man. I think there are definitely ways to make those work. There's still this element of a brown background even though the new collection is a bit more distressed and softer than the sharp design of the um, original collection. There's still a bunting print where, where this one is very simple. This one has a bit more design to it and that background layer of the pale watercolor where this is just on a plain cream. There are large florals just like in the current collection. These are just softer. And I think there's definitely, um, there are definitely ways to make these work. I don't think every single pattern from the new collection goes with every single pattern from the old collection. But I think if you have them on hand and you are willing to, to look carefully, you'll find things that come together. Like this tiny little heart print has the same aqua that's in the cloud print. And um, things like that, that that will give you a bit more mileage if you want to pull out the old Dear Lizzie Spring and put it to use with the Dear Lizzie, Dear Lizzie Neapolitan. So that's what I'm going to do with the first layout, which is all about sewing before anything is glued. So it's a little bit like cheating, um, but it's not really because all the paper elements will still be stitched. It just gives you the option of sewing them off the page so that you never have the fear of sewing through your whole layout and having a stitch go wrong and ruin the whole page. So we'll start with that. The easiest way to work on a layout like this where there's no fear of sewing through the full page is to go ahead and cut the papers that you're going to use and the accents you're going to use so that you get an idea of what's going to be on the page. So I've cut a, um, a sheet of the new Dear Lizzie to a nine and a half inch square. I've cut a mat behind that that's a 10 inch square. I've cut a five by seven photo. Um, well, I suppose it's a photo mat. I'm not going to use it perhaps completely evenly around the edge but maybe off-centered but the idea of a, a pattern paper block that's going to go behind the photo um, and a few different cutout elements from the different sheets and then I've put it all on a sheet from the older Dear Lizzie Spring collection, that original collection and at first was going to keep it the crisp white but realized that one of the reasons that particular sheet was still in my stash is that it had a bit of water damage to the top. So what I've done is just added a frame of brown glimmer mist in the sand color to um, to cover up the damage and then just bring that all in together. And I think in the end that will work well because the new papers have that watercolor look to them. So if you want to mix the older crisper design then maybe a bit of watercolor wash or glimmer mist wash will help, uh, help that look a bit more together.
Now, um, what I'm going to do is nothing here is stuck. Everything is separate elements. So I'm going to take this to the sewing machine and one by one, I'm going to add a stitched frame around everything. Now I'm just doing all of the stitching exactly the same. So I'm going to run a straight running stitch with a longer stitch length than what I would use on fabric so that I'm not cutting too many holes. I want you to see the stitches rather than the needle holes. And I'm just going to add that same frame to all of these elements. So the photo, the mat, these three accents, and these two um, smaller pieces of paper. I'm not going to sew through the, through the background at this point. I may decide once all those elements are um, done if I think it needs another stitch frame. But I think because of the the frame I've already added to the pattern paper that that will be enough on the background. But that's all I'm going to do. I'm not going to sew through more than one piece at a time. So the idea then is that if I were to be sewing this and I mess it up, nothing on the rest of the layout is affected. I can just go and cut another piece of pattern paper and try again. Once all the different elements are stitched, I can bring that back to the layout and start to glue things down. Now, there are a few options with what to do with the threads that you end up with at the end where you start and end your stitching. And for a layout where you want everything to be tidy, the best thing to do is to pull them through to the back. So what you need to do is go to the last stitch and pull just gently and you'll be able to pull those threads right through to the back and then there won't be any loose stitches left on the front. And what I tend to do is instead of cutting them really short is to run a bit of adhesive and make sure those are all tacked down and then if there's still lots left over I can cut this bit off but that way I don't run any risk of there being an end that's so short that it's going to unravel on the front of the layout. So for a layout like this where it's a bit more formal and I want things nice and tidy, I tend to bring them all to the back. Now if your stitches are really close to the edge, um, which I don't have a particular example here but this is probably the best one, um, you can just loop it around to the back, no pulling it through. Just take the stitches, bring them to the back and put the adhesive in the center so that all these loose bits are here and if your stitching is already really close to that edge it won't really be noticeable and it may be that once you have all the layers on your layout that that little bit of overlap is covered up anyway. So it's just a matter of choice. If you get um, one that's being particularly problematic and you can't get it to pull through from the back side you can also just put this front stitch on a needle and pull that back through the same needle holes that you've already made. So there's lots of ways to get those edges nice and tidy, but usually you can just pull gently on the stitches behind and then those loose threads will end up on the back. And here's everything finished. So I didn't add any stitching to the backgrounds so and nothing here is stitched through more than one layer. And um, that's everything finished. Um, one other little advantage of sewing through individual layers is that it does mean that you can still use stitches and pop dots if you like to use foam squares or anything else that layers things up off the top of the page. You can still stitch it and then leave it through the top where if I tried to sew through pop dots I'd end up with a real mess. Things tend to, you can do it, but ten, things tend to go a little skew if the placement will move, it'll really gum up your sewing needle and um, it's a lot easier to just sew that layer and then place it on the foam squares. So that's one page finished. Now the next one I'm going to look at some ideas for stitching as you go. So instead of stitching all the separate layers and then putting it together, we'll um, add a few bits, stitch that, and then keep adding and stitch some more. Sewing as you go is something that can work really well if you like to layer scraps or smaller pieces of paper. So for this I started with this whole sheet from the Crate Paper uh, Paper Heart collection and then went through some scraps of papers that I'd used on other, pa other pages. So there's some October Afternoon, there's um, some Basic Gray Kissing Booth, there's Dear Lizzie, this is an older crepe paper from Emma's shop, this is also Dear Lizzie, and this is an older American Crafts, which is from, 
I think PG Keen, but it might be Hello Sunshine, those two that came out uh, about the same time. And basically I've added black ink to the edges of all of these, but nothing stuck down. And I wanted to go with the idea that I would start with these large layers, and I have a, a strip of photos to add. And then I want to work with smaller layers in different kinds of embellishments. So possibly some of these journaling tags, as I have a few left. And then specifically, embellishments like these. This um, flower sack uh, is what, they come, what they're called from October afternoon. And you get all sorts of different pieces, scallop circles, butterflies, little flowers, and things like that. Some hearts and various bits and pieces, all cut from different things that coordinate with their collection. And then Basic Gray calls this um, die cut flowers. And in this pack, you get a mix of flowers and hearts and assorted shapes that match, but they're cut from a variety of materials. So you have the pattern paper from the collection, but you also have these that are printed canvas. And they're not um, they're not really thick or anything that's hard to work with, so they're about the, the same thickness as a cardstock white paper, but they're fabric. So they give you a, a different texture and a different um, look when they're on the page. So I want to work with all those sorts of little pieces in the layers. I'm just going to pop those to the side for the moment and start with all the larger boxes of pattern paper that I've added to the layout. and. Um, figure out where I want them and just go ahead and start stitching them. And to glue layers like this, what I tend to do is figure out where I want these different elements to go. And then I start just pushing things around so that I can get enough glue to hold it all down without trying to memorize where things went. So if I just glue to one layer at a time, in theory, it should work out. So I just pick things up and start gluing as I go. And because I'm going to be adding stitching to this, I don't really need to worry too much about the adhesive keeping everything perfectly in place. I just want it to stay together while I run it through the sewing machine. And in fact, the more you're going to sew on the layout, the better off you are with very little adhesive because the more adhesive you run through your machine, the more gummed up your needle's going to get, so it's going to need replacing sooner. Um, and and just the more wear and tear it puts on the machine because although paper is not really what it was created for your machine will go through paper without any trouble but adhesive is a totally different element and you, the more adhesive gets onto the needle the more it's getting into the workings of the machine as, it, as the needle moves up and down so I try to keep my adhesive to a minimum when I'm going to be putting the page through the sewing machine so these layers are now attached enough that I can move it around and nothing's going to fall off. So I'll start to go and add stitches to this and I'm just going to use mostly a straight running stitch. I might throw in a little bit of a zigzag here or there, but I'm not using any fancy smanty stitches, just normal plain things. And I'm not going to try and draw a whole box along everything. I'm just going to put in some straight lines here and there that will um, flatten everything to the page and keep it nice and secure. This is about how much I would prepare before I started sewing. So I've just picked out the different elements from the two different die cut packs that I wanted to use. Plus I added a couple journaling cards to the bottom of the stack. So one of the tags from Dear Lizzie and then one of the journaling tags from the L Studio pick. And um, then I added in some bits of ribbon and lace. And I've just started kind of layering them up in what I imagine will work, but I'm not gluing anything, and I just try to get everything to a, a point where I, I pretty much like how it's coming together, and then I'll pick up the whole stack like this, and I'll take it to the sewing machine, and I'll just hold it all in place and turn it upside down. And then what I'm going to do is start sewing from the bottom. So I'll take those two layers and I'll stitch through the middle. Then I'll add the next layer and I'll run some stitches over that. And I'm just continuing to add from, um, from the pile that I've already put in order. 
make it look how I like it most as it goes. It's never going to look exactly like the stack that I started out with, but that's part of the fun. And I'll just keep stitching one layer at a time. And then when I get to the top, then if it looks like it's complete at any stage, then I stop there. And then hopefully it looks complete when I get right to the top of the stack. And then I have a few bits that I'll um, add when I attach it to the layout so that I have some um, some pieces to connect these papers to the stack of embellishments so it's not just that I've made this stack of embellishments and then stuck it on top of the layout. Hopefully it will um, come together a little bit more fluidly than that. Just to show you, I end up with a big mass of stitching that will need to be tidied up a little bit, but if you look at the back, I am stitching right the way through the whole stack every time, and it doesn't give the machine any trouble to sew through so many layers. So Add adhesive to the back and adhere it to the layout. I'm just looking for a spot where I'm not covering up people's faces in the picture. And sometimes a few loose elements will benefit from a little bit more adhesive just to keep things flat like that little bit of lace. But the threads, I just um, kind of scatter them out. And then I start to add a few elements that aren't stitched to try and um, piece it all together. So I'll add these two from the October afternoon die cut pack with some foam squares so that they have more dimension, but I'm not going to sew through those. Here's how that looks all finished. So there's lots of stitching as I go and everything is pretty much stitched right through to the back with the exception of this big group which is just stitched to its bottom layer and then glued straight to the page. Now if this isn't your style but you still want to do a lot more stitching um, as an integral part of the page, you might check out the uh, stitching workshop here at Two Peas in a Bucket. It'll be listed in the products below this page on Two Peas but it's also available in our workshop section in the store. It's just five dollars and it has lots more ideas. It's by um, Jen Johnner who used to be a garden girl at Two Peas. So just throw that out. It's full of great pages and different styles. Definitely things that you could put to use. But one more layout to show you today and that's how to use stitching to finish a layout once everything is already glued to the page. One final option is the idea of using stitching to dress up a page that doesn't seem to be flowing quite how you'd like it. So this layout is mostly done. It has all of the things that you would expect from a layout. It has the photos, it has the journaling, it has title, it has embellishment and some pattern paper, but it's not looking the way I want it to look. There's just not enough detail. Things are a bit too flat even though there's a lot of layered embellishment. And um, so I decided I would finish this by adding some stitching. So I'm going to take this to the machine. I'm going to use black thread on this layout so that it's high contrast with what's there. And um, then see if I can come up with some from different elements to stitch through and add some more detail to the page. So to finish it off, I ended up starting by stitching through the thickers. And if you have trouble with your thickers not staying put, this is one way you can um, can make sure they're not going to move because they'll be stitched to the page. So you can you can sew right through things like chipboard, um, and it's just the only thing I wouldn't suggest sewing through is foam adhesive or or foam letters because they do tend to just kind of squidge and move as you stitch them, whereas chipboard is sturdy enough that it will go through just fine. Now, um, I also added a zigzag frame around the edge and some just straight stitching messy lines where I went forward and then hit the reverse button, backed up, and then went forward again. Just to add a bit more texture, and it's not a neat and tidy look, so I went ahead and left some of the ends just hanging free, but um, you can obviously take those same techniques and make them much tidier if that's your style. You could take things and make them very lined up and tuck all the edges in and not do any repeating uh, or reversing and, and it would be a completely different look with the same technique essentially. Um, one thing that happens is you'll learn very quickly the, any foibles that your machine has. Mine is that every once in a while it likes to skip a zigzag stitch just where I've um, I not quite let it catch up with me as I was sewing and that happened here when it skipped from the flat to the chipboard. And it happens on um, flat stitches too and I've just 
I, I got lucky on the, the rest of this page that this was the only one it skipped. It just happens to be what my machine, um, the stitch that my machine tends to miss. And so I just know that that can happen and I prepare myself to cover things up. So here is a lucky little butterfly to cover that up and now the missed stitch is a little secret between you and I and no one who looks in my album will know because the butterfly matches the other butterflies that were already on the layout so that works out just perfectly. So I just wanted to include that as a, a idea of even if you're stitching at the end don't be intimidated because you can always cover it up if something goes a little bit wrong you can add something sewing through thickers is one of the more permanent options of of um adding stitches to your page but it's not the end of the world say i really really hated the way the stitches went through this m i can go in and cut those stitches put another thicker on it and make it work so um don't don't stress too much it is still just paper and uh, go ahead and give it a try. I really hope you've enjoyed uh, this week's episode. I'd love to see your sewn pages get that sewing machine to work on some paper, and I hope you'll join us for this week's challenge. Thanks very much, and I'll see you with our next adventure. Join us next week for the continuing adventures of Glitter Girl and the ongoing mystery of the scrapbooker behind the mask at twopeasinabucket.com.